Hi everyone and welcome back to our class in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning in Finance. Topic for today is data pre-processing. We've talked about the different data sources we have at our disposal in finance nowadays actually. Um, we have financial markets data, we have alternative data sets, so we are complementing our data from say balance sheets and income statements and um, from markets with data let's say from Twitter, Facebook, um, but also geographic data, uh, satellite images, etc. So financial and other data nowadays are often quite incomplete. For example, you have missing values, you have missing attributes for some data points. Um, sometimes we have um, granular data, sometimes we have aggregated data. So depending on what you want to do and want, want to achieve with your data analysis, you sometimes need to aggregate the data or you need to <laughs> disentangle, if that's possible, aggregated data back to the granular data they were created from. Financial and other data are often also sometimes noisy. They contain errors. Uh, you have outliers. The outliers will not be erroneous, but you want to exclude them anyway, because this might drive your results into a direction you don't want to. Um, they could also be inconsistent. For example, they could contain discrepancies in codes or names. Very, very, very simple and trivial example is for um, that many companies uh, don't just have one single name, but they um, have many legal entities and all the um, subsid uh, subsidiaries and all the companies that um, belong to one large conglomerate, they share one part of the name, but they have slightly different names in different countries. And you need to make sure that these inconsistencies uh, are taken care of. So data pre-processing is about resolving these issues, making sure you have complete data, you have um, no errors in your data and everything is consistent. You need to transform raw data into a format that is understandable by the computer and by your machine learning algorithms. And data pre-processing is now key to a good model performance. First thing that could arise is if you have errors in your data, if you have incomplete data, <laughs> you might not be able to perform your analysis in the first place. Your algorithm might just stop. But that's actually the good case and the um, bad and worst case is that your algorithm works, it works on the data and you don't see actually what um, the errors produce. You don't see the errors in your result, you only get an output that is biased by the results you haven't identified beforehand. So we need data pre-processing and this typically involves two steps. First, you need to understand the data. You need to make sure that you have a good feeling of what the data looks like. And this includes looking at the raw data, taking uh, the extra mile, looking at the Excel file, looking at the CSV file uh, or the other formats the raw data might come in and having a look and a good understanding of what the data looks like. And then you have to prepare the data so that uh, your machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms can properly work on the raw data. Now, if we have a look at what Les Meister in 2015 proposed, the main tasks of data understanding are, first of all, collecting the data. It's usually a huge task, especially if you think about alternative data. You need um, to work with the interfaces and the APIs with different data uh, sources. You need to describe the data. In research, this is usually done by looking at descriptive statistics. You have to explore the data and verify the data quality. Look at the NAs, the not availables, look at missing values, look at data values that are completely off the chart and make sure that this is not a data error, that in the best case this is an outlier and then think about whether you should remove these outliers. These tasks are performed to make sure that the data are adequate to meet your goal that you want to achieve with your data uh, analysis. Furthermore, by exploring the data, and determining its sparseness and identifying missing values, you get a better idea of which learning method might actually be appropriate for this kind of data sample. It might be that you've thought of one method and you now, after looking at the data, you see, okay, maybe I should use a different algorithm. And verifying the data quality is critical. We are talking about algorithms and methods that are based on and 
get there a huge advantage from working with big data and if you have a huge data sample and the quality is not good well might be that the analysis is doomed from the very start so understanding who collects the data how it is collected you can um, try to identify incomplete erroneous data it might be that the data vendor already tells you that okay we uh, are rounding values uh, we don't have access to this sort of data or uh, sometimes for that variable for that feature we do have some missing values so it's possible that rules for collecting the data change over time um, and when this happens this will lead to structural breaks in the data uh, which isn't a problem per se but you need to be um, aware of this and you need to account for this in your analysis. Now in data preparation, you need to select the data, you need to clean the data, construct the data, integrate and format the data. Uh, in the simplest example, this would simply mean put it all into an Excel file, put it all into a spreadsheet and make sure that the spreadsheet at the end is in a format that is readable by, let's say, R, STAT, or any other statistics program. So the goal of these tasks is to get the data ready to use as input in the algorithms. In other words, make it ready to use in your statistical software. This includes merging data from different sources, feature engineering, and maybe further transformations you need to apply to make it readable to the computer. Some algorithms require categorical variables, yes or no. And um, this needs to be formatted into the way one or zero or true false or to be formatted as factors. So this is sometimes seems to be very trivial, but this is one part of your data analysis that will take up a lot of time. And the data might be split into training tests and validation set. We saw that in the very first video, um, which is quite simple, I guess, um, but at least you need to remember this. Now, data understanding and data preparation are often not performed separately, but are interrelated. And as an example, we will later have a closer look um, at the German credit data set by Dua and Graf. Um, and the data are also available uh, from the um, UCI machine learning repository, along with a very detailed description of the data. So I encourage you to have a look at the uh, data in the example at uh, UCI, and we'll talk about this uh, credit data set and loan data set here uh, in these videos next. Now, before um, in the next video, we'll start with the example. Let's talk about which statistics software we will be using in the remainder of the class. We're using R. Now, everything is performed in R. R is free software under the terms of the Free Software Foundation's GNU General Public License and so on. Um, I and my team, we would recommend you the use of R Studio. Uh, the RStudio desktop, which is just a little bit more comfortable uh, and has a higher usability than the standard R uh, software that is distributed. Um, and this is also for free. Uh, you can find the link here. If I find my cursor, yes, here's the link. And alternatively, if you're studying at Leipzig, you can also download it from our um, Computer Center's website. So RStudio is uh, the way to go here. And this is quite convenient. Now, R is a language and environment for statistical computing and graphics. It's one of the major languages for data science, has been around for decades, and it's highly extensible via packages. That's why with the new algorithms and new methods for uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, we've just seen an increase in the number of packages that are purely devoted to these methods and uh, the standard uh, statistics packages are obviously also around. There are, of course, alternatives, most notably Python, libraries with scikit-learn, Keras TensorFlow, etc., um, which are related and similar in some extent, to some extent, but here we'll focus on R. Um, you can also use different software uh, and different programming languages, of course. So next, we'll start with a practical example, but that will be done in the next video. Thank you.